here we still have two variables. It is this one light bulb costs four dollars. This is a situation where I will dig out two variables, two unknowns from it. Okay, and then we will plot, we will find some ordered pairs and plot it again. What unknowns could there be if, if you're just told that one light bulb costs four dollars? You know, that's it. You know it, whatever. Now the unknowns are here that let's say you buy several light bulbs. Okay? Then what will your cost be? The unknowns are how many light bulbs you buy and how much it will cost you. Two variables. So let me write here that number of light bulbs and let's choose a letter for that. Number N N N would be number of light bulbs. Bulbs here. And then cost, well, let's put C is cost. So now I have my two variables N and C. Now we need to find an equation to, re to describe the relationship between N and C. Okay, but before I can I do that, I can actually fill it in here. Now let's say the number of light bulbs is here and C is here. If the number of light bulbs is zero, then my cost is zero dollars. Let's study it here first. If I have one light bulb, then the cost is four. Two light bulbs, eight. Okay, it's going to be a skip counting pattern here, right? By fours. And so now, describe this as an equation that relates N and C. You can see there is the multiplication by four. Okay, how do you get C if I give you N? If n is 8, what do you do to it to get c? You multiply it by 4, right? So, to get c, what you do is you take n and multiply it by 4. But in algebra we would write it as 4n, the number, the coefficient before the variable, okay? So this is our equation, c equals 4n. And now we will plot them over there in the coordinate grid. This time our axes are not called x-axis and y-axis, but these, n and c. This is the n, and this is the c. And n I would go by once, as usual. But I don't want to go here on the c-axis. I don't want to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because I run out of my numbers. So I have 28 here, okay? So I want to go by some bigger number. I want to have a different scale here. Let's say if I go by fives, then I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. That might work. So, okay, if that would be our scale, now I will plot those points there, and zero, zero. Of course here. One and four, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Zero is here. 0, 0, and then 1, 4 would be 1, and then somewhere there, 2, 8, 3, 12, 4, 16, 5, 20, 20, and so on. Again, we get a nice linear pattern. It goes as if in a line. In the last situation, again, we need to find two variables. It just says that you bicycle at a constant speed of 15 kilometers per hour. What would be unknowns? What two unknowns would there be? You're bicycling, you're going. Okay, one unknown is how far have you gone? What's the distance? And the other one is the time. How long did you take? Distance and time are the common unknowns when you have speed involved. So you would have distance. D is the common symbol for distance. T is the common symbol for time, common variable for time. And how are those related? Okay, I always remember it this way because it's so easy to remember that the speed is always kilometers per hour, miles per hour or something like that. In the speed itself you see that there's a division here, this per is division, is always the distance divided by time. Kilometers is distance, hour is time. So distance divided by time gives you the speed. Let me write this here as a little reminder. Speed is always found by taking distance over time. And so our equation, speed is 15, we will get 15 and then d over t. This is our equation. 
However, I can also write it in another form. I can think of it as an equation where I multiply both sides times t, or maybe I know it already, that distance is the same as 15 times t. Okay? You can get into that from here if you multiply both sides times t, because then t disappears from being divided here. t disappears from being the, the denominator, and you get 15t, and then d alone. Okay? Or maybe you know it, that distance is always the speed times time. And now here, in our table, we have distance and time. It is customary that we put time here, this way. So I will put it here too, first. Time, distance. And then let's say we have hours here, however many hours you bicycle. And then how far will you go? In one hour, 15, then 30, then 45, 60, 75 kilometers. And then we will plot these points over here. Like I said, this is going to be the time axis and this is going to be the distance. And so time goes by once, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. Over here, I need to think about my scaling again here. You see, I went to up to 75 in 5 hours. So maybe I'll make this to go by tens. Now, ready to plot the points. 0, 0, again. 1 hour and 15, somewhere there. 2 hours and 30. 3 hours and 45. 4 hours would be exactly 60. 5 hours, 75. And on and on it continues. I could continue my points and I could continue this table too, of course. Okay, I hope this was helpful.